Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking liquid transition effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have here is we've opened up After Effects and we're going to create a new composition. The duration I'm going to keep it about 5 seconds and for the rest I'm going to keep it at 1920 by 1080 pixels. Just going to press OK. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new solid and I'm going for a white color for the solid but it doesn't really matter what color. Then while the solid layer is selected we need to come over here and grab our rectangle tool and we just need to draw a mask that fits roughly about half of the screen. Once we've done that we need to come over here to our pen tool and we need to put some points on this rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and click some points try and make sure that it is an even number at the end of it so I'm using let's say 10 and once you've done that then what you need to do is you need to press V on the keyboard for your selection tool and you just need to move some of these points up and down so what we are going to do is have a look that looks something like this and then we can move that one over there then we just need to curve them so if you come over here to underneath the pen tool you can go to the our vertex tool and what you can do is you can just click and hold shift and that will create a nice curve on these edges over here so i'm just going to do that to all of my uh, points over there and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to highlight some of these points and move them around a little bit so I'm just going to move this one down, maybe this one up a bit and then this one up a bit as well. So then what I need to do is I need to come over here and I need to move forward in time. So I'm going to move forward, let's say probably five frames and then I'm going to click on the stopwatch for the mask path. Then I'm going to move back to the front of the timeline. So with the mask path selected, all we need to do is uh, make sure that you drag this off the screen just like that. And so once you've done that, then what you need to do is you just need to come over here and edit some of these things. So all I'm doing is I'm pressing V on my keyboard to pull up my arrow and then I can just highlight these shapes and then move them around. Now the more random that you make this, the nicer the animation will actually look. So just, you know, have a play around with some of them up and down, etc. So now we're going to repeat that for the second part of this animation. So we're going to move to the end of the animation, which is going to be about 10 frames. And I'm just going to press V and then highlight the bottom row of all these uh, points. And then what I'm going to do is um, just click and drag them down until they are off the screen as well. So now we've got this cool looking animation and we're just going to come back over here and we are just going to... Uh, change some of these settings as well so I'm just dragging these things down so just highlight a point and then drag it down and then just you know maybe move them around slightly like I said the more random that this is the better the overall animation will look like so there we have the first part of this animation we have this liquid kind of thing blob falling down the next thing that we need to do is we need to create some droplets so to create these droplets, we're going to move uh, backwards in time, let's say to about four frames. And we are going to come over here and grab our pen tool. And we're just going to draw a simple drop, just like that. And then I'm just going to maybe edit it a little bit like that. And then what I need to do is I just need to duplicate this, let's say five times. So that's control D to duplicate. So now I'm just going to move this over and then move the next one over again so now what you want to do is you want to try and just you know edit some of these settings make some bigger longer smaller change the size etc so something like that and now what we need to do is we need to highlight all of those masks and make sure that we click on the stopwatch for mask path and make sure that all of them are selected I'm just going to press U on my keyboard just to bring up those keyframes and then what we need to do is we need to go to the start of that animation and then we need to just make sure that we have hit V on our keyboard and then we can move them up just until they're off the screen. So 
now it's looking pretty good. We've got the droplets coming in and yeah, it's looking not bad. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to the end of the animation and we need to repeat that process again. But this time I'm just going to drag them all off the screen. So now we will look something like this. So now we have the droplets coming in. All right. And then they start to come out. Cool. So the final thing that we need to do for this uh, in transition is we need to create some cutouts. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, make sure that I'm still on the, the right uh, layer. And I'm just going to click and draw another kind of shape. But this time I'm going to change the mode to subtract. And so now you can see that it's kind of cutting out of the original uh, blob that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that, let's say five times as well. And then I'm just going to move them around at each different point of this uh, liquid kind of effect. So once I've done that, then we just need to animate it and we're nearly done for this little project. So I need to come over here, open up all of my mask paths, make sure that I click on the stopwatch there. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that I go all the way back to the end to the first frame. And I'm just going to move them off the screen. So it will look something like that. And so now you just want to time it because you don't want the black, uh, these little holes to overtake the rest of the animation. So I'm going to move forward to the end of my animation and then I'm just going to move it down just like that. And I'm just going to see how it looks so far. So maybe there I'm just going to hold it up slightly and then here just bring it up maybe a bit more. Okay, cool. So now we've got a simple little animation that imitates water kind of falling down or trickling down. So the next thing that we're going to do is once you're happy with all your keyframe animations, I'm just going to come over here to my effects and presets and I'm just going to search for an effect called roughen edges. And so now if I have a look at that, I'm just going to increase the border to let's say 20 and I'm going to increase the scale to let's say 600 and you can see what's actually happening here. You can, you can see that it's cutting little bits and stuff out and so it's looking more cartoony and that's looking pretty cool. All right, so that's our in animation. So I'm just going to rename that in. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to duplicate this layer by pressing Control D and I'm just going to rename that as my out animation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward in time. So the end of our animation is roughly around about 10 frames. So that's when the next animation will kind of start. So you can put the out animation at around about 11 uh, frames, but we'll, we'll test it out. But anyways, you need to come over here and you need to find your track mat. If you don't have track mat, you can click down here to toggle switches. And what you want to do is you want the alpha inverted mat. And so when you go and click that, you can see that it's kind of taking that uh, liquid animation away. The only thing we need to fix is the little droplets that are coming in. So I'm just going to press U on my keyboard. I'm going to highlight all these droplets and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move them further away. So I'm going to highlight all of them and then move them probably to about there. And the last thing that we need to do is to make sure that we subtract them. So now we've got these little droplets falling and the rest of our animation and it's looking pretty cool. So there we have the main part of this tutorial. The next part of the tutorial is what we need to do is we need to add some color and we're just going to play around with some of the settings. 
So now the next thing that we need to do is we do have a little bit of a rough edge on the side from the rough and edges uh, effect that we're using. So what we need to do is we just need to press S on our keyboard for scale. Make sure both the in and out is highlighted and just increase the scale to 101% and you get rid of that. So once we've done that, we then need to pre-compose it. And so I'm just going to call it a uh, transition. And now we can start to really stylize this. So the first thing that I want to add in here is I want to add a, you know, some color. So I can add a, rad a gradient ramp. So all I need to do is search for the gradient ramp, make sure that I find my colors and then I can uh, put them in. If you have Red Giant, uh, Red Giant has their own gradient ramp and they really have some really nice presets here. So all you have to do is just come over to Red Giant and then just apply the preset and there you go. Now it's looking pretty cool. Now if you don't have Red Giant, you can always use Color Hunt and find your colors there and put them into After Effects gradient ramp anyways. So let me now show you what you can do uh, with actual video clips. So I've just put some video clips in and all I'm going to do is just drag it to the timeline. So I've got a clip there of, uh, you know, some guy and I'm just going to move forward my transition to about one second. So if I play that back, there I've got the transition and it looks pretty cool. And then the next clip will come in. So let's say I put uh, this clip in. I'm just going to put it on top there. Find when that transition ends, when that whole screen is covered and then I can let that next transition fly in. So things that we can do to our transition right now, we can, if we click on it, we can extend it and just, you know, drag it and make it a little bit bigger. So now when we, you know, preview that, you've got like a longer kind of wipe. So that's looking pretty cool so far. So what, what else we can do is we can uh, duplicate that. And so I'm just going to move forward in time. And what we can do is we can press R on our keyboard for rotation. So if I rotate this, let's say 90 degrees, and then I put in another clip. And so I'm just going to put this clip over here. So there I've got my clip and you can see here that now I've got this um, transition coming in from the sides, but it doesn't cover the whole screen. So all I have to do is just drag it a little bit longer. So now I've got this transition that comes in from the side and then it reveals my next uh, video. So I think uh, that's about it for this lesson. So hopefully you've learned something and hopefully you are able to make your own liquid transition. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool effect uh, and I will see you guys next time.